Good morning everyone, my name is Kean Job. I'm a dairy farm manager from County Longford and I'm delighted to be taking over the Chagas Instagram account for the day. Today I'll take you through a typical day here on our farm and some of the management decisions that we make. I'll also go through my own career path to date and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and if you have any comments or questions throughout today, please send them in. Just finished the breakfast there, so I'll go through a bit about my own story to date. Um, I'm from a small suckler farm in North Longford. I always loved farming, and when I was about 14 or 15, I started doing a bit of leaf milking for some farmers in the area and realised the potential for a future career. Uh, after the leaving cert then in 2014, I went on to do the Level 5 Certificate in Ag in Ballyhays, and during this 12-month course, I completed three months with... Um, the McGann's in Killashee milking about 180 cows and this further confirmed that dairy farming was what I wanted to do full time so I completed the level 6 certificate then in dairy herd management in Ballyhays also really enjoyed the level 6 course gained a lot of technical skills on cows and grass during that 12 months uh, done a further 3 month placement with Seamus Dolan in Ballyconnell milking just over 200 cows and then I finished that course in May of 2016 and went on then in September and started the Level 7 Professional Diploma in Dairy Farm Management in Moore Park. This course consisted of two years of professional work experience along with three days a month on block release in Moore Park. So for my first placement as part of the Level 7 course, I went to work with Kevin and Margaret Toomey in County Cork to our making about 350 cows. Um, it was a great experience. It was my first time, I suppose, being away from home and first time working as part of the large team. So it was a savage experience, loved every minute of it. And then in July of the following year, I went to New Zealand to, for the calving season and breeding season on a 1400 cow farm in Canterbury on the South Island. Loved that as well. Kind of wanted to stay there at the time, but um, came back to finish the course and went to. David and Tory Baker in Borough and County Offaly making 450 cows. Um, loved my time there as well. And then finished the uh, Level 7 course in August of 2018. The Level 7 course is something that I recommend to anyone trying to get on in this industry. Uh, for your three days a month in Moore Park, you're exposed to the best advisors and researchers in Chagas. Um, so gain a wealth of knowledge and as well as that then the host farmers are some of the best farmers in the country so um, you get great experience also so when I had the course finished I went back to Kevin and Margaret to manage their home farm uh, making 460 cows by that stage uh, on a rotary parlour spent about 18 months there it was a savage experience going back to Kevin to manage the farm. Uh, it was the first time I would have got so much responsibility managing staff, cows, grass, everything, myself, and I suppose the fact that it was Kevin's home farm, he was there on hand to give me a hand if I needed advice or even step in if he thought that there was something that I should have been doing differently. So it was a great learning curve for that 18 months. So after almost four years away from home, I was starting to get itchy feet to get back closer to home and in 2019 I started talking to the lads here they were beef farmers at the time and looking to go into cows for spring of 2020 they had the stock and had started the construction so in December of 2019 I finished up with Kevin and started here just before Christmas getting the farm finished and ready to milk cows in the spring of 2020 and last spring we started with 320 heifers here and this year we're making 460 so it's been fairly full on for the last almost two years now and um, we have the farm well under control now there's still lots of work to do but we're getting there thank god
calves just getting their meal. This is the stronger batch of calves. They're all February born early. Uh, they're on a kilo a meal and they're grazing half the grass. There's a smaller batch of calves then that are lighter, get two and a half kilo, kilos a meal to try and help them catch up and we'll hopefully have them all back in one bunch by the end of the summer. Calves are put out to grass here at two to three weeks old and they have the option of going inside if weather conditions are poor and they're reared on a on a large feeder outside and then it leaves weaning and everything a lot less stressful on the calves. Calves have got two warm doses to date. They're due an IBR live vaccine next week and then they'll be well covered then for the summer. We have background on the farm. I'm managing the farm for the Finn family here in Ballymahan. To originally beef and sheep farmers wasn't really paying the way and then a couple of neighbouring blocks of land came up for lease so they decided that they had enough land under them to go ahead with uh, dairy farming and in 2018 they purchased in 200 heifer calves put them in calf and in 2019 um, started building the facilities and also purchased a further 120 in calf heifers so it left us with 320 for last spring there's currently about 210 hectares or so on the milking platform 40% uh, of which is owned and the rest are on long term leases so we're fairly understocked at the moment but there's a lot of land out for reseeding and uh, a lot of land just reseeded so it's coming into play now but um, up till now we were kind of highly stocked but for next year we're going to be understocked we hope to calve down just over 500 cows next year all going to plan Working on the farm then is myself, uh, Aidan, Jordan, and Michael Finn. They're here full time. I suppose we're doing a lot of the land reclamation ourselves. They have their own track machines and stuff like that. Um, working all the time, trying to get the land finished. And we're currently building another cubicle shed as well. So that's taking up a lot of time. We also have um, Declan who has just started he recently completed the leaving cert. He was here last summer and he'd done every Saturday for us there um, since last summer. But he's here full time now for the rest of this summer until he goes off to college. Uh, we also have James who's here a couple of days a week depending on his availability and whether or not we need him. And then we have other relief milkers and part time help also. The farm is quite heavily staffed at the minute. Uh, I suppose we would have put in a hard enough spring and done a lot of milking between myself and the, the three Finn lads. Um, so since the summer has come and the young lads have become available, we've taken them on and it has relieved us up to catch up on other jobs like fencing and um, as I said, there's still a lot of land reclamation going on. Um, so it'll probably be back just to the four of us then from, we'll say, September on when the lads are. Just on the sustainability side of things, we're sowing clover with all our reseeds and any paddocks that don't need reseeding but have no clover are also getting over sown um, with clover using a nine box machine. These paddocks then get 30 to 40 percent less chemical nitrogen during the main growing season and less of an impact on the environment and less chance of nitrogen leaking into the water. Good evening folks, thanks very much for all the comments and questions. There's a lot of them but I'll try and fly through as many of them as I can before I have you all bored to tears. I'm not sure if this question means be employed by a dairy farmer or go making your own cows. Because um, there are two different answers but I give a quick one on each. Um, 
in terms of going to milk your own cows. If it was two years ago, I would have said plow ahead, go for it, but there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment with co-ops being able to take milk. There's new regulations coming in terms of stock and rate, price of materials for building and everything has gone crazy in the last 12 months with COVID and everything. So there's definitely a lot more consideration, but if it's your 150 cow less sort of an operation, it could be very financially sustainable. And then in terms of being employed by a dairy farmer, uh, I think it's a great career. I genuinely love my job and I could say that I'd count on one hand the amount of bad days I've had in the last 10 years being involved in the dairy industry. Uh, get great job satisfaction from dairy and when you put in effort into something and it pays off, um, it's a great feeling and can also be very financially rewarding as well. Yeah, making my own cows is probably my next step now. So currently in early stages of discussion at home of possibly making 70 or 80 cows there and keep my job here. Um, but also share milking to some degree has been discussed here as well uh, going forward. So I have no definite answer on what the plan is going forward. But um, I'd like to think that the calves that I have this year I'll be making them myself um, in two years' time. Also, would we'll be looking out for a functioning dairy farm for long-term lease, but these are getting harder and harder to come across and harder to compete with existing dairy farmers that are looking for a second unit. Admittedly, organisation isn't my strong point, but uh, we use WhatsApp groups and whiteboards to communicate to the lads' rosters and milking rotas and um to do lists and stuff like that uh, and then i suppose the fact that a lot of the extra staff other than myself and the three lads are part-time so we can organize to have them here on days when we're doing work like dump threader work and the dreaded stone picking and stuff like that so it means that we can focus on what we're normally doing uh, yeah so myself and the three lads would meet fairly regularly but not in set in stone as to weekly or anything like that Um, we just meet when we feel we need to and then well most evenings we have dinner together in the house anyway so uh, we can discuss a lot about the plan for a few days ahead at that time of the day Um, and then as i say we kind of just communicate to the staff via whatsapp groups and uh, there's whiteboards in the office and stuff like that been a few questions in on breeding so the cows are all high bi half of them are frisian and half of them are cross with jersey and the plan going forward would to remain cross breeding with jersey we're aiming for a cow that's 70 percent frisian and 30 percent jersey they're just hardier for the large scale herd we're running the herd all as one mob so um they have to compete and stuff like that so you need a cow that's an aggressive grazer and um, able for long walks as well. So I worked for a share maker called Jason Strawbridge when I was in New Zealand. He was farming 1,400 cows, as I said, just outside Ashburton in Canterbury, um, very dry part of the world. We were irrigating. Worked as part of a team of 10 and they were nearly all different nationalities. Um, so it was a savage experience one that I'd recommend to anyone trying to get on in dairy and, and even to anyone to go out and see New Zealand as a savage country. Um, I'd be hoping that in two years time we'll be making 550 cows here. It'd mean that the stocking rate would still be very sustainable and it'd also mean that we wouldn't need to go into derogation. Just feel that derogation isn't the way to go with the way that these new stock and rate limits aren't a million miles away and then in terms of kilos of meal fed last year we fed about 730 kilos of meal as far as i can remember and this year we'll probably feed somewhere similar possibly a bit more because of the cold wet spring and i think it'll be a few years before we hit the golden 500 kilos of milk solids with the level of rapid expansion that's happened here but i'd like to think that we should be able to hit 480 in the next two to three years extra help just to catch up for last time in terms of time off
that's it for me so guys thanks very much for all your questions and interaction throughout today i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and thanks to chagos for asking me to do it it was a great experience and i hope you all stay safe and well while things slowly move back to normal thank you